Hi everyone, welcome back. So this time we're going to be going over the theoretical density for metals. And I say theoretical because this is always a little bit different here. Not everything stays quite so perfectly packed as we see in our um, other settings. And also it can be based on like, you know, isotopes, different isotopes, different neutrons, well, they're going to be different sizes. So nothing is quite this perfect. But this will give you a very good estimate. So, well, how does this work? Well, first off, we just have to figure out the mass of the atoms in the unit cell. And we're going to divide that by the total volume of the unit cell. Because density is just simply mass over volume. The volume of the unit cell, well, that's pretty easy. Um, at least it would seem like it. Like, well, that's just A cubed. And that is true. Yes, it is A cubed. But you have to know what A is for each individual atom. It is different. Um, this right here, and we already know that based on the structure, how many atoms are per unit cell. Atomic weight, we can look up in our periodic table. Navas Godre's number is a constant. So the only thing we really need to get from experiment is what is the volume of this unit cell. And even with that, a lot of times the radii of different um, metals and atoms are known. So you can use that to solve these problems for you. Okay, so let's look at this for chromium. The big thing we have to figure out is what is A to start. Everything else we can look up fairly simply. It's got an atomic weight of 52 grams per mole. The radius is going to be 0.125, and that is for one chromium atom. So from here to here, that's 0.125 nanometers. How many atoms are in a unit cell? Well, this is a body centered cubic, so you'd have to know that for chromium. So it'll be two atoms per unit cell. And then since we know what the radius is, we can plug that into our equation for A. Um, and we get this value for what A is equal to in terms of the radius. We do that from our work um, when we do the atomic packing factor. If you don't remember that, just remember that it touches from this point through the atom to this point. And we can solve it using that. That's 4R. And well, that is our C squared. We have to figure out what A squared and B squared is. Well, the height, at least, we know that that's going to be A squared. And that one is a little bit harder to figure out, this bottom line right here. But that one would be simply A square root of 2. And we'll square that. Because we would have A squared plus A squared. Let's see, go to C squared over here. And so that's where it comes from. So with this, we can put that as 0.2887 nanometers. And then we would know what the volume is. So volume is simply that cube. So 2.406 times 10 to negative 23rd centimeters cubed. It is tiny. Now, if we plug in everything we know, volume of unit cell, the atoms per mole, um, its molecular weight, number of atoms per unit cell, we get that the density is going to be 7.19 grams per centimeter cubed. 7.19 grams per centimeter cubed. And the actual density is 7.15. So you can see that we did a pretty good job here. You see that ours is higher, most likely because in real life, we'll have some isotopes in chromium, which will throw it off. They'll be too big. There will be defects. There'll be imperfections. There's always things that happen. And so our actual density, from measuring real chromium, will never be quite as good as our theoretical perfect density. Now let's look at the different types of materials and see how they're density, their densities. Up here we have the highest densities, up or down here we have the lowest densities. And so what we see is that metals, you kind of probably guessed it, they are the most dense. Graphite, ceramics, and semiconductors, they're in here, they're still fairly dense, but you know they're not doing as well. There are some fairly low density metals right here, which can be less than glass fibers or other polymers, but that's fairly rare. If our polymers, they're fairly low density because of all those twisty coils and everything. They aren't just, they just don't tightly pack. And finally, we have these glass fibers and other types of fibers, which have all this empty space. And because of these empty spaces, they are very, very low in density.
So that'll be it for this time. I'll see you all next time. Have a wonderful day.